Yo Ski, today's video, another in the series of uh, sewing machine operations, a progress, but really it's more of a product design uh, journey. Uh, but before we get to what I've made, let's start with context as it should be. So a shoulder strap pad. You know, some people won't even like get it immediately what does that supposed to mean. So let's have an example here. It's a bag of the bushcraft flavor, but you know, they come in all flavors that you like and also the ones you don't like. And it has a shoulder strap, you know, for mounting it on yourself. And what you see here is a commercial of the shelf shoulder strap pad. Uh, this one's apparently made by Maxpedition and uh, it has two major functions. So the first one is that this part is padded and the second functionality is that it should make it easier to slide the strap around you know, rather than dragging it around your shoulder or whatever you're wearing. Now, there is a bit of a conundrum here because if you think about this sort of padding, so any sort of a decent, large enough bag that you are, like it will be easy to actually put so much stuff in it that it's really heavy. So like I have a 150, well definitely over a hundred liters uh, Samsonite duffel bag and it obviously comes with a shoulder strap and a shoulder strap pad. So basically you could assume that any decent product which would benefit from having a shoulder strap pad will have it. Even my much smaller, it's like a 60 liter Titan. I don't know if that's a brand that has any recognition or whatever, but it's a 60 liter duffel bag and it doesn't have a shoulder strap. Instead, it has like handle straps, so two of them on each side, but it still has not the sort of a design, but uh, like a thing that's sewn onto one of the handles and then you can wrap it around and it has velcro there and it serves the same purpose so you know like the the actual straps don't dig into your flesh or your body or whatever you're wearing so yeah i mean this one obviously my expedition i've bought it separately and that is a kind of an interesting thing because this sort of products like just a shoulder strap pad seems to be rather rare i remember when i was buying this a couple of years ago like i'm in poland you know the shithole of polandia uh, this was actually difficult to find. I don't think that I found like on any like Polish marketplaces. I think I had to go to like Amazon and import it from somewhere in Europe. And it was relatively expensive given what it is. And it is not much. I mean, you get bugs with it and you know. So in any case, I've got it. I really like the fact, like the most important part for me is the sliding part. Because like with those sort of bugs, I usually have them on my back and only like move them around to the side or to the front where I need something from them. So the ability to be doing the slidey slidey thing is really important. And uh, yeah, so that's a commercial solution. Now, as I told you, these are hard to combine and they all seem to be large, which again makes sense. I mean, the main purpose is for stuff that's heavy. Now. I'm trying to you know, minimize, downsize the amount of crap I carry with me. So I've been doing this for a couple of years. This is a recent switch to something that's actually larger than its predecessor. But yes, it's a bum bag, uh, funny pack, uh, whatever you want to call it. I've just obviously modified it. So it's no longer goes against uh, like around your waist. Instead, you have a shoulder strap. Now, as you would imagine, this shoulder strap is about slightly more than two centimeters, so maybe it's like an inch wide, who knows. But the point is that for a shoulder strap pad, you ain't gonna be using any commercial solution, because as you can see, this would just be extremely ridiculous and probably also not actually working in practice, because you know, when, while this is kind of snug in here, this can actually go, you know, like across it. So, so yeah, motivation to actually try do my own and uh, a journey that was and technically in a way still is. I've started in May 2024. It's now two days before September. So over three months, I've made the first version and failed a lot. 
I'd made the second version, failed a little less, and finally, and I think this has probably two weeks, maybe three weeks, made the thing that I'm finally happy enough with to call it that basically I will wait when this fails one way or another, learn from that, and then decide if I want to redesign any elements of that or just make another one. Because again, I'm still very, very, very far from being a seamstress master. My quali quality of my worksmanship leaves a lot to be desired. But yeah, let's start with the first one, because it's actually really fun. I mean, fabrics, working with fabrics is a completely new domain for me, which means that I'm prone to making really stupid mistakes that I will share with you right now. So, as you can see, the first version, it's kind of too narrow, because it is too narrow. And you know why it is too narrow? Because of the fallibility of humans. So when you look at the shoulder strap, and you, like, ask about the dimensions. Well, obviously it has a width, again, ab about an inch here. Then it has a length, you know, because you need to have enough length to actually put the stuff around your shoulder, have the bag at the right place, uh, on like around your waist, stuff like that. But it actually has thickness, you know, just like a piece of paper. This is not zero. This is definitely not zero. And then again, at least I was consistent in my idiocy. The Velcro, you know, here's the uh, here's the loop, here's the hook part of it. You know, it not only has width and length, it also has thickness, which you can only really see once you put it together that this is actually substantial thickness here. And, you know, like, even if you squeeze it, it's still not going to be zero. It's going to be a couple millimeters. This is going to be probably one and a half, like, one millimeter. But this stuff adds. So what I completely forgotten about was exactly that fact, which is why this is way too uh, narrow to properly fit it. And remember, the strap is supposed not to be clamped in, it's supposed to be able to move. So for that, you actually like, maybe something like this, you see? Now it kind of works, so it's, it's very far from ideal. But, but, I've made it, you know, like, uh, very poorly, but I decided that I need to make something to be able to actually test it in practice. And I've been wearing this for about a week and a half, two weeks. And, you know, I've learned stuff. So, uh, the thickness of materials was pretty immediately obvious. What wasn't that obvious is that for padding, this, uh, like, all of them have padding from the same material. It's like acrylic felt, uh, which is a nice material. So, this has a single layer. And uh, it doesn't really do anything. Like, I couldn't feel much of a difference. So, and another thing was that, well, add more felt, see how that goes. And uh, first, um, like the third, uh, but most important thing is that it wasn't sliding really good. It got a little better, like with wearing it. So I guess the materials were out, but it was not good enough. So that was definitely a thing to think about. Yeah. So yeah, first one out, second one in. As you can already see, it's uh, much wider. Though the design idea is exactly the same. It has two layers of the acrylic felt. And that was actually kind of incredible. Because again, this has been tested for about two weeks in practice. And there was a day where I went down, like out, and I was like, Shit, I forgot my smartphone, but then I realized, hey, I have padding, maybe I just don't feel it, and I've just checked, like, in my bag. And yeah, so, you know, this is kind of funny, because, like, the smartphone is, like, the heaviest thing I have in the bag, which is not even a kilogram, much less tens of kilograms, like you would have in a large duffel bag, but still, two layers of it, and, you know, like, being actually used to, like, the weight when it's packed with all the stuff that I need... It was sub so substantial that I actually halted and just made sure that I got my phone with me. So yeah, I mean, at this point... Oh, and I forgot to mention, in this one, there was one thing that I've already nailed on the first try, which is the length this this size, or like this way. So like width-wise, if you think about the strap, it's about, uh, yeah, 15 centimeters. This is perfect uh, uh, length for me. Not too short, not too long. And again, this is uh, another thing that you get when you're making something from scratch for yourself. It all depends on your build. 
no, like uh, on a scale from Slender Man to Silverback Gorilla, I'm much closer to the latter. So, you know, like uh, this being shorter would be not enough. F stuff being longer, probably too comical like that. Because even that Max Expedition one, it's a bit comical, but then again, given the padding that it gives and, you know, that being a product, so like this is what you get, it's fine. All right, now back to this one. So, yeah, address the uh, material thickness, some of the widths. There is even like some more space so that there's supposed to be less clamping inside it. There should be some, you know, like space for the stuff to move around. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this is different material. It's uh, gray and this is black. So I had this another extremely stupid idea that I also had this nylon material but with uh, like a rubber urethane coating because it's uh, completely waterproof and you know it's so smooth when you touch it so maybe stuff will slide better on it. <sighs> you know rubber like power tools even the cheap ones, sebs, uh, over molding, <laughs> it's there for gription not for stuff to slide. So this is again terrible at sliding and uh, similarly like the first one it got slightly better with use but it still wasn't sliding as nicely as I would like it to slide and otherwise this was a really good uh, outcome uh, even though you know like the craftsmanship it's extremely crappy still and one thing that I still do not understand kind of I guess understand right now is that Having completely two different materials, especially one that's rubber coated and grippy and trying to put like two of them at the same time under the sewing machine, they do not move at the same rate, which is why this is not a design feature. It's a manufacturing, uh, design for manufacturing failure. And I really tried, you know, like to clamp it with uh, different things just to force it to move at the same rate. No, it didn't happen, but it was like... Uh, centimeter consistency so still got a useful prototype out of that and uh, yeah this has been used for a couple of weeks and i was thinking that you know like i've got my length i've got my padding got my general sizes the only thing that's left that's the most important fact for me especially for something that's relatively light is the ability to slide it around thankfully in the meantime i was you know like uh, doing inventory orders with all materials and tools, I'm new to the whole uh, sewing machine and the fabrics and stuff. And one of the things I bought was uh, yellow nylon straps, uh, like uh, construction straps. Um, I'm sure there's like proper nomenclature, which I don't know at this point. You, you shall forgive me. But I was basically thinking is that why is it so that that Maxpedition one works so well? And then it actually struck me at one point. You see friction. It depends on the area of contact. So if you have this sort of a thing and you put the strap here, I mean, even when it's actually rounded around your shoulder, there's going to be at least like 75% of this area is going where it's, you know, it's going to touch. There's going to be friction there. But if you think about this sort of an arrangement, when you open this up, you know, those straps, again, they have dimensions, they have thickness. So, your strap is actually having most of the friction only on those, like, when the straps are. So, like, just those two rectangles here, which is, like, it's a number of times less friction than this. And I was thinking, well, let's, uh, let's you know, that. let's just go with it. Let's do this sort of a design. And guess what? <laughs> it works perfectly well. The thing just slides in it. So yeah, I'm kind of proud of this one. So, you know, like being at the third one, I've actually said to myself that perhaps now is the time to actually, you know, uh, also look at the craftsmanship. And the craftsmanship is mostly the fact that you have to remember to switch the threads. There's a lot of, well, there's like a free setups for the threads so that you don't really see them that much. So in terms of construction, first I've done the pouch. This is again, this uh, black nylon. It's, I wouldn't call it Cordura yet, but it's, it's a, like relatively decent quality. I don't think it got any certification, but you know, for my purposes, it's going to be perfectly fine. Again, two layers of this uh, acrylic uh, felt stuff, and uh, yeah, my 
first proper try of doing overlock stitching on a like usual non-overlock machine, which is possible with a special feed, etc. etc. It's not perfect, but it holds. Now, once you have the the pad, the pillow, whatever you want to call it, the two straps, they are exactly the same. They have a Velcro uh, hook on this side, so this is the uh, rigid, rigid stuff, you know, the one, as you can probably hear, rather rigid, than the uh, loop on the other. You make two of them. And again, as you cannot see the, you just cannot see the stitching because the colors are matching. So the top thread is white, the bottom thread uh, is yellow, and it's the same here. So you know, this the top one is yellow, but the bottom one is black, which you know makes it look much more professional than these pieces of uh, crap with red and whatever color was there, was there. And this one is uh, obviously even worse because this was the first one. I really didn't care. As is usual the thing in life, with care you can get pretty good results. And uh, yeah, this ha the straps, they have two simple locating stitches and then this uh, more heavier one, which is like a multi multiple threads per whatever. I'm sure there's nomenclature, I apologize. But yeah, I've been using this one, as I said, a couple of weeks. I'm gonna be using this until it breaks. I think what's going to break, it's... I still have no idea how to end the threads properly for this sort of stuff, so it's gonna unthread in some time and probably break, but hey, again, it's fine, I'll probably learn from that. But yeah, pretty interesting thing, three months in the making, mostly in, you know, wearing it and thinking about it and deciding about uh, um, how to approach it. So it's product, product design, even though, don't worry, I'm not planning to <laughs> start my manufacturer or sell any of that. Though, if you are in the industry, I would really like to be able to buy like a shoulder strap pad for much smaller, like narrower straps, just to, you know, to have the possibility. I mean, for EDC, this is a really nice thing. So yeah, I hope you found that uh, interesting and inspiring, and maybe you will now understand that everything has thickness, whether it's a piece of paper or a strap. Uh, and if you ignore that, you're gonna fail. That's how reality works. Uh, all right, I think that's been uh, all for today and we're under 20 minutes, which is nice. And yeah, as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, I mean, I'm really new to this whole working with fabrics thing. It's mind bending with having to think uh, inside out, left stuff, left side, uh, right, uh, you know, it's a completely different mental space. And yeah, I mean, again, designing stuff, most of the work goes there, it's the most fun part. Being better at sewing, it's something that you can only get by uh, practice. So, more ideas uh, to make? Yeah, if you have any ideas, what well, could be an interesting project. But then again, I'm, I'm not really interested in, uh, like, download the patterns and make the thing. That's to me, if there is no design involved in there, then I'm just basically a sweatshop worker. And I mean sweatshop worker because it's so hot in here. Everyone and everything is sweating all the time. But yeah, <laughs> anyways, uh, as usual, thanks for watching uh, and uh, see you next time. Bye.